So now we will write our own strcat function. So for example, we have this string over here and we are using the strcat function. Let's suppose that we wrote this function, okay? So it takes a destination and a source also and it concatenates or adds the source to the destination. So str, for example, after executing this line of code will be something like this. We will have hello and word as a one string. So basically, first of all, this is str, the original string. So basically, we want to copy this string to the string str starting from the index of the backslash zero. So we know that the index of the backslash zero is after this O, right? And this string over here starts after the O. This is the space, as you can see, then the W, and this will continue until the end. So the important thing over here is to start copying starting from the index of the backslash zero. And whenever we end, we have to add the new backslash zero. So we know that the index of the backslash zero is the size of the string. And now this is our new string. So the size of this string is the size of the original string plus the size of the string that we added, right? So these are the required information. Now let's write our function. So void str cat, it takes a destination, an array, and also it takes a source. So char source like this. Now we want to loop over the destination. For example, it is str starting from the index of the backslash zero. So for int i equal str len of our destination, right? So basically now we are standing after the O and also we should iterate over these characters over here in order to be able to catch them and copy them to this string. So for example, let's define another variable called J and it is equal to zero. So we want to iterate using J over this string over here. Now the condition for this loop is that J iterates over this string. So whenever we finish iterating over this string, we want to exit this loop. So as usual, J will be less than the length of this string. So str len of the source, right? Then we need to increase J and also in the same time, we will increase I. Now, we are iterating over the string after the last letter and we are iterating over the source perfectly. So now we will say something like this. So destination sub i is equal to source sub j. So let's go through this example. First of all, i is equal to the length of destination. So destination in this case is str. So i will be equal to five. So we are saying destination sub five is equal to source sub j. And first of all, j is equal to zero. And of course, this condition is true. So destination sub five is equal to source sub zero. So the letter after the O, which is currently the backslash zero, will be the first letter of the source. And it is a space. So now you can imagine that we added a space over here. Now I plus plus and J plus plus, the condition is still true. So we are saying destination sub six is equal to source sub one. So this character over here will be equal to W. So we add W. Now J plus plus, I plus plus, destination sub seven will be equal to source sub two. So we will add O over here. And this will continue until we add all the characters like this. So whenever we add the last character, we will make J plus plus. This condition will no longer be true because we iterated over all this array and we will exit this loop. And as you can see, our string over here has been modified perfectly, but we still need to add the backslash zero over here. So let me return this as it was. Now, to add the backslash zero, we said that the position of the backslash zero is the size of our string. So this is our new string. So the size is the size of the first string, which is str plus the size of the second string that we added. So we would say something like this, destination sub str len of our str, which is the destination, plus the str len of the source, which is the part that we added. But this one over here may not work because as you can see, we edited the destination string and now we don't know where is the backslash zero. So this over here, as we saw in the previous videos, will not give us a correct answer, right? So in order to get the original size of the original string before we add anything to it, before the loop, 
over here we can get it so let me get this strlan okay and over here let's say something like this so int dest length i mean by this destination length is equal to strlan of destination now this contains the original length of the destination string which is in this case equal to 5 now over here we can say i is equal to destination length like this okay and everything else can be kept the same but i want to say one thing we saw in the previous video when we added printf hello in strlan this statement was printed so many times this is because whenever this is executed the function will be called so we can call this function a lot less we can call it only one time and store the value inside a variable so let's say int source length like this and set it to be equal to the strlan of source and now we use this variable over here so we say source length like this so now instead of calling the function many times we are only calling it over here okay so now over here instead of using strlan of destination we simply say destination length and we also can use strlan of source this would give us a correct answer but instead of calling this function and wasting time we can use this variable so we can use source length like this now this element should be equal to a backslash zero perfect so as you can see after writing our code we did many changes so this is perfectly fine whenever you write some code you might improve it you might find some mistakes it's okay what's important is that you try to cover all the details and by the way if you are saying how did he know this how did he think of this how am i supposed to know this how am i supposed to think about this don't worry this is perfectly fine we all were beginners okay at first you won't know how to think or what to think about and you'll be amazed how other people think actually other people were just like you they were beginners and when they solved a lot of questions and so many ways of solving problems then they were able to think properly and be good programmers and this is why i'm solving a lot of exercises for you to introduce you to a new way of thinking and different ways of solving problems okay so don't worry everything you are passing you through right now is perfectly fine now let's try this function hopefully we don't have any errors so whenever we call the function we expect str to be something like this so let's print it so put s and str run the program and as you can see our program has stopped working okay it seems you have an error but we see this hello in strlan so let's actually remove it and see what's the error oh my god it's obvious <laughs> look at this this is not a string okay so let's make it a string i'm so sorry i didn't see this and let's build and run the program now we get the correct output awesome now i want to say something we have the correct output but we don't have a correct code okay so whenever this string is created it is created for five characters and one more for the backslash zero and over here we are adding some characters to it that are not allocated in the memory so initially we should have enough characters if you don't know how many characters you want to add let's suppose it is maximum equal to 50 but in this case we know so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 characters and one for the backslash zero so we get total 13 characters build and run the program and we have the output perfectly perfect so really congratulations you made your str concatenate function and i'll see you in the next video